Hi, welcome to another episode of Ask Augustine. Today I'm going to answer a question that I get quite often, um, which is, what do you think is the hardest piece of music to play or to perform? I think this is a really hard question to answer because different things are, different pieces are hard in other ways. And you might think that I might answer Paganini or uh, Paganini Caprices or uh, Ligeti Violin Concerto. But, um, something like that and of course those pieces are really difficult but I actually find for me to perform in many ways uh, the music of Mozart is actually the most difficult and I've met a lot of musicians who feel that way that somehow Mozart is uh, one of the easiest composers to learn and yet one of the hardest composers to perform to play well because um, even though his music lies really well on the instrument actually um, it is so exposed and fragile. So many aspects to his music that have to be perfectly balanced with each other, so many elements that have to be there, and it uh, has to have this elegance um, that's part of his style, but also lyricism, but, but it's very classical and, and elegant, shouldn't be too romantic, but at the same time you don't want to start sounding too careful when you play Mozart, just tr you know, trying to play everything elegantly, then it sounds like it's kind of too careful. It actually should also be very energetic and full of life and many uh, with many contrasting characters. And of course, the audience doesn't necessarily realize that Mo that <laughs> that there is this whole struggle going on. As you get more into Mozart's style, you become more aware of this incredible elegance that is part of his style. It's it comes out his way of writing comes out of the what they call the gallant style, where often a lot of gestures are very uh, charming and elegant and have a kind of roundness to them so you don't want this, the gestures to be to feel somehow flat you want them to be round in a way that that often form has a the edges are kind of rounded a little bit because there's a lot of debate about how much you should you should vibrate in Mozart's music and it comes from the fact that his father, um, Leopold Mozart, wrote a famous book uh, of, on violin school in which he uh, wrote that violinists should not vibrate all that much. Of course, sons are not always like their fathers, and so uh, there's that. But also, I find that Mozart's music just is so lyrical. I mean, this is somebody who was always thinking operatically and wrote so many operas, always, was always writing for singers. A great Mozart singer, they don't necessarily vibrate every note equally. There are certain notes in the phrase that get vibrated more and others that get vibrated less. What are the notes that we don't have to vibrate? And sometimes notes that are very light, notes that have a character that is more dancing than singing. Um, this ties in with uh, an earlier episode when I was talking about singing music, dancing music, all that stuff. Um, and in, I find that often the last notes in a lot of phrases um, uh, get over vibrated so very common that that people do this just because it's kind of the natural thing to do you're finally done with the trill so you kind of sit on the last note but actually would be I think a more elegant Mozartian gesture that last note doesn't actually require Vibrato. So I, when I uh, work on Mozart, I, I look for the notes that don't really benefit, they don't gain anything from vibrato, and I just don't vibrate those. It requires a bit of critical thinking, because a lot of how we vibrate has to do with habit, it has to do with what we're used to hearing, what we're used to doing, what our hand wants, um, and so just examining that um, can help a lot in finding a style that feels right. Mozart, a style that then is, can be still be incredibly expressive, but yet somehow not really romantic. It is a little bit, you've lightened it a little bit, a little bit more transparent. So all those, all those slurs, I'm trying to give them a shape of... of a little bit of weight, but then lift at the end of the second note. It would actually be quite easy to play this passage on the string and a little bit rougher. But now 
it doesn't really have any sort of elegance anymore uh, and it doesn't really f feel quite as fun quite as bouncy quite as humorous and uh, this is what I meant with Mozart being so hard that even though it's I don't find it that hard to play but then to play it really well the way that I actually would like to play it I find it harder maybe than most than the music of most other composers <laughs> One other aspect uh, about Mozart that is very important to keep in mind and kind of adds to the performance is that he was a composer who was always thinking dramatically in storylines and always writing operas and a lot of his instrumental music as well, too is written in that sort of language so I often feel like in his in his music that you can totally hear different characters uh, almost entering the stage and having a conversation. So at the beginning of the fourth concerto is an example of that, where he's It starts with this sort of trumpet call, uh, just very, uh, uh, very, uh, very assertive. Uh, I, would, I would say you don't want to vibrate too much because if you do that, then it really doesn't sound at all like a kind of trumpet trumpet call it and now it now it sounds uh, <laughs> fine too much like a violin I would like in order to have that character I think it does have to be a little bit straighter the sound but in the next passage it's quite delicate and very playful um, and uh, requires a totally different uh, different approach. So that so my I, my bow stroke is much. Um, there's more lift. I try to achieve a kind of lifting feeling on bump bump that it feels like they kind of bounce upwards, and I don't really produce any hard edges the way I did. So this okay, it's fine to. To kind of hit the string a little harder for the trumpet call but here I go on the side with the bow and um, and it's a little bit more of the elegant rounder shape so it's a suspension so uh, it's an appoggiatura so um, really make sure that this is louder than the next note that it doesn't so that's not not like this that you suddenly suddenly start vibrating like crazy because it's uh, the trill is over it's better to vibrate less because that is the shape that it should that it should have it is the, re the resolving note and then the same thing that you did here now I would emphasize the first of each group because now you're going but that's ornamented and again this shape and don't vibrate too much okay and then <laughs> so a lot of things to keep in mind then the next bit is actually much more lyrical now it's it's singing um, in a way that the, f the first part of the theme didn't so, da -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. it's totally uh, totally lyrical I would definitely vibrate a little bit but keep in mind of the shape that it's not but it's that's definitely the strongest point. Working on Mozart actually, I think, helps with every other composer as well, because all those elements that you work on when you when you work on Mozart, you're going to find again in other pieces. Uh, but when you play Mozart. They're really, it's really obvious when things are not working and it just forces you to to really pay attention to all these different details so I think it's it's actually very good very good for the playing and of course 
it is incredibly beautiful music also when things do come together and when, once when you when you experience a good performance of Mozart um, it's incredibly beautiful and satisfying and fulfilling as it's, um, it's one of the greatest feelings um, it's just a difficult difficult road to get there I feel well I hope that's helpful and I'll see you next time <laughs>